Hi all. Uh, first of all, I announce uh, the bandwidth uh, available for, to the conference is very limited. And we have uh, 500 people sharing a single uh, 35 Mbps uh, internet link. Please be consider, be considerate uh, and avoid uh, usage uh, such as large download and the use of streaming applications as far as possible. I hope you enjoyed the lunch. And now, open source identity management, Francesco Ricchino. Hello. Uh, I hope uh, even because of these uh, lunch issues, maybe someone else will, will join later. Otherwise, uh, I'm anyway happy to introduce myself. My name is Francesco Ricchino. I'm 35. I'm Italian. Uh, I have a trick surname. And as you can read from there, my nickname at ASP is Il Grosso, which basically translated from Italian means the big one. And you can see why by yourself. Uh, at ASP, I'm a member, and um, in the Cocoon PMC, and also the uh, C Code PMC, the PPMC, because we are still in incubating. What we are going to talk, we are going to are going to share some thought on identity and access management to have, in order to have a common ground on such topics. Then we will go through some vendor and open source solutions in this area. And finally, I will be pleased to introduce you uh, to Apache Synco. Uh, what we are talking about when we say identity management or idea? Uh, from a very technical point of view, we just talk about data records, not more. The only uh, detail relevant at this point is that such data is related to a person. And uh, from an, an IDM point of view, data record generally becomes account and person an identity. As you can see from the picture, this is a very common situation every one of us is every day experiencing. We have an account Gmail, a Twitter account, Facebook, and so on. We have lots of accounts, either in the internet or in our company uh, applications. But from a business point of view, identity management is really important because it is the, uh, the joint effort of IT and business process to get a grasp, to handle uh, the user, data and how such users are accessing their applications. So it's security, it's compliance, it's a lot of uh, um, business words. There are quite five from the technical words we are uh, usually used. Uh, we can, from a technology point of view, we can say that uh, IDM technologies uh, are generally uh, three. We're talking about identity stores. It's basically where the data actually is stored. So we all know it's technological, it's uh, stable technology, stable year over year. Then we have provisioning. And provisioning is probably the, the component that uh, usually has the toughest job to, uh, to do. Uh, it keeps things synchronized and also take care of uh, data conversion, format conversion, and so on. We will see each of these technologies in depth, in depth later on. And finally, the access management puts some security on top of all this. Let's first start with identity stores. We all are familiar with examples of such, such technologies, mainly directory technologies, so LDAP or Active Directory, if I'm off, or Meta and Virtual Directories when you want to provide uh, a directory-like access to data that are stored in, in other formats or, for example, in the relational databases. Uh, identity stores are fine, are stable, there are a um, wide range choice for them. Uh, you can generally uh, create and manage accounts on the same place. Uh, it's easy. Uh, you can share the same identity stores, uh, the same identity store uh, among different applications and uh, this can give some degree of uh, factorization and, and, uh, and, uh, and some enhancement 
because, uh, for example, users can just uh, connect to, to the various applications using all the same password. Provisioning is the provisioning engines, as uh, I said, have probably the the, 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 the highest um, the highest rated uh, job here because uh, they have to keep each identity the identity stores as much synchronized as possible, and they need to do this in the most handful and practical way. And I, a provisioning engine should be as less intrusive as possible. It should be helping administrators, not creating additional issues. Uh, for this reason, uh, you can map it easily on the back end of the application rather than on the front end. And uh, the, the, so the, the, the hardest part for this is that often it's not practically feasible to keep things synchronized without affecting or modifying the the identity stores connected. To, um, regarding this, the communication uh, between provisioning engines and the identity stores can be done in two different ways. With connectors, that requires no additional change in the identity store, no installation, the communication is initiated and uh, maintained from the, uh, the provisioning side, uh, and the agents. That instead, uh, require installation on the identity store and, for example, uh, can profit from uh, usage of local APIs. So, uh, agents are more intrusive but can be also more effective. Let's uh, take a look at what uh, is the identity, uh, the, the provisioning engine uh, jobs from a higher level point of view. You can consider identity like something that has just life cycle uh, since the beginning uh, when it is provisioning, since uh, from the uh, provisioning engine to the identity source uh, until it, got, it, it gets deprovisioned. Deprovisioning is uh, probably the most critical task in such area. It is a common experience that the, the highest security holes come from, the, from uh, former employees that still have access on their organization's application even after leaving the organization themselves. And this is because the life cycle management is uh, con confused uh, with the identity store management. The identity gets, uh, um, the, the identity life cycle is managed by the provisioning engines uh, because at, at each change in the, in the identity life cycle, the provisioning engine takes an additional action. Uh, it, can, it, can, it can do approval, compliance, reporting, policy check, administration, notification, and so on. These are all high-level features that a, a single identity storage cannot uh, provide by itself. And finally, access management. Access management acts as a sort of mediator uh, among users from one side and applications from the other side. And uh, it, it, it is, of course, focused on front end, you know, on application front end. And uh, it is uh, the place where the policy, the access policy uh, decision and, and enforcing takes place. Uh, mainly, it deals with authentication. You all know what, which, uh, what authentic authentication is. Uh, it can be done with different uh, means, uh, login and password, biometrics, as much as you want. Uh, and authorization. So, uh, give to, the, to an authenticated user the entitlements he needs to be working on all applications. Uh, often, uh, access management also take care of federation with SIML because uh, we are basically talking uh, about the same stuff but instead, uh, but from an internet point of view. Probably main drawbacks of access management reside on the fact that uh, often you can only apply all this to web application instead of client server. This is due to the nature of protocols. But also that you sometimes can have uh, 
there at that time so were trying to integrate uh, existing applications to a centralized access management system. Uh, a question that I personally heard many times when going to, to try to uh, convince some CTO about how good would uh, would be for them to implement uh, a full identity management solution is why is not my Active Directory enough for this? So it's a matter of scale, of course. So why uh, identity source are not enough? Why we need also uh, provisioning engines and access management systems? The uh, first reason is that uh, systems are by nature heterogeneous. It's very hard to think that a complete network of services could be could just rely upon a single and authoritative uh, identity store. And also because uh, often the, the, the ownership of data does, the, don't always reside on the same resource. Uh, application can have and we often need a lot of databases are designed for this, then instead, then instead of modifying the applications to work with a centralized database, it would be easier to leave the application with its own database and work in, but still have a control, a centralized control. And uh, finally, what are the, the, the two points that in my opinion are the most important one, uh, lack of workflow. You don't have approval, you don't have control, even a notification, with, or we are working only with identity stores. And finally, there's a hidden infrastructure, infrastructure management cost. As, as, uh, as soon as the uh, organization is growing, your costs are not, uh, will be growing uh, much more. Uh, an example, just to summarize what said so far, uh, we have a, um, almost typical organization, organization with lots of applications uh, and different user categories, the employees, but also partners and customers and former employees, as I said before. Uh, you can imagine any, imagine any kind of interconnection between these two layers, uh, especially if the link between them is uh, provided uh, only by the, 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 the willing of network administrators that sometimes just forget to remove access. When applying the centralized identity and access management system, everything is controlled, gathered through the centralized system. Administrators have an, uh, an access point where they can control, uh, make compliance, and so on. And finally, Former employees should be, uh, we should be safe from this. Okay, uh, this area has been historically, uh, at least so far, a uh, domain uh, busy by uh, the big players, the, 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 by high rated uh, vendor products that were year by year reported in their famous. Gardner uh, magic quadrants. Uh, first of all, until a few years ago, it was some microsystems that initiated most of, uh, of uh, technologies in this area. And then after Oracle acquisition uh, gave to, to Oracle also an additional uh, suite. Then Nobel, IBM with Peabody, Microsoft. But there are also some players that apply very well in uh, small domains, being identity, net IQ, say point, and quest. And you can add even more to this list. The important thing is that uh, this area has been um, only recently affected by uh, some a few the, the open source configure, uh, considerations. And this is because it is a, a typical uh, business area. But things are going to change here as well. And there are, we can find a lot of open source products uh, relate, uh, working in this area. Uh, in this first slide, I just reported some logos of uh, open source products not in the Apache Software Foundation. So, uh, 
most of them, all of them uh, are open source, or at least, uh, at least uh, almost. For example, the open IAM, uh, I'm not sure if they say it, it's open source, but I couldn't find any download source link on their website. <coughs> About the rest, uh, everything uh, as a, an open source license, it is somehow used. Some, some of, uh, those, uh, of uh, these technologies have been used for years, are stable, reliable, and growing in importance. Take, for example, OpenLDAP, just to say one. But also, uh, the other one can, uh, can have some success histories. Look, uh, then let's look at the Apache Software Foundation. Here we have good uh, representative of each technology. Uh, we have the Apache directory for the entity store. Uh, as provisioning, we have Apache Simple. We will go uh, much deeper in this, um, with this in a minute. And then we have Apache Shiro for access management. Apache Shiro, for example, uh, is used by the Sonatype community. So uh, it has uh, it already has also some business case history, very relevant. Um, about about Simple, uh, it's a project. It's currently uh, in the incubator. Uh, actually, yesterday we uh, were able to our valuation proposal was approved by the, the EMC. So as soon uh, as there would be a new board, uh, we. If they like our valuation resolution, uh, Simple will become TLP. Uh, we entered in the incubator at the beginning of this year. We made a few ASP releases. We learned how to play uh, with, in the, with the ASP rules. And uh, we are trying, we are rising in popularity. There, there's the traffic in our mailing lists is uh, also growing. We have new people interested. And in these days, I think the day after tomorrow, Cole, one of our mentors, will be uh, introducing Synco at the JaxCon, which I, uh, I've been told is a big Java conference here, here in Germany. Uh, from a feature point of view, Synco is a programming <coughs> engine, workflow based. Uh, it provides account and password policies, uh, ident uh, agentless con uh, connection with identity stores. You can uh, define and get all the things, reporting, so high level business functionalities. We have a very nice administration console based on Wicket. This is a uh, screenshot of our welcome page. And then uh, it has been uh, designed since the beginning with customizability and extensibility in mind. This because, as said before, for a provisioning engine, it is very, very important to. Uh, be adaptable and flexible, and to reduce administration hassle. Briefly, we have, these are our building blocks. Uh, most of them are already in the, in the Apache Software Foundation, with some possible exceptions, Spring, Quartz uh, activity. Uh, but uh, we also have uh, some, some uh, minor player here, uh, that, that black on the left side uh, that's taking care of the actual connection with external systems. Uh, let's take uh, a look at the architecture. We will go deeper with the uh, connector layers later. Uh, the architecture is uh, uh, quite easy. We have two main modules, a core RESTful, with providing RESTful uh, API access to all the functionalities, and an administration console that is just a RESTful uh, client. The administration console is based on Wicket, as I said before. And then all the entities and uh, services uh, that are living inside the connector. We manage user roles, policies, we have workflows, scheduler, uh, connectors, and for the, um, for the persistence layer, we rely on uh, OpenJPA. This almost ugly slide is happily the, 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 the main job done by Synco as provisioning engine. 
what Sinkov does basically is define some attributes related to users and to roles in a different way. You can define attribute schema as with, with their type, enum, string, long, boolean, uh, date, and so on. Whether it is mandatory, whether it, whether it is multi-value, almost the same things you can do with a directory in a DAO. But you can also, once you've defined these kind of attributes for sync of users, because sync of has an internal storage, then you can map uh, each of these attributes to the external resources. Once uh, attributes are mapped, any time that the changes are occurring either in sync of or in the, ex in, in the identity stores, in the external resources, this change is propagated or synchronized. And in the, at this point, policies, workflow, notification takes place. Take place. Uh, Syncop can, can even uh, define uh, attributes that are not the standard one. We have derived attributes wh whose value is derived from composition of other attributes, thing, for example, to full name, or Virtual attributes. Virtual attributes are not stored in sync, but fetched automatically and cached from external resources, but shown to the external as, a, as if they were uh, plain attributes. Um, about the a, a critical point in a provisioning engine is the way how uh, the engine communicates to the external world, to the identity stores in particular. Um, some microsystems had a very nice project that they also uh, made available uh, as open source under terms of CDDL before the acquisition from Oracle. And this uh, project, called the Identity Connector Frameworks, was also used by the commercial Sun Identity Manager and is currently used by Oracle Wayset. Uh, this, this, this project was basically uh, disrupt by the acquisition, like has uh, almost mm, lots of other projects, including our open office. And uh, we, we found, uh, we were able to download all the source code and to uh, get all the, the site back in Google code, right after the, the, this, uh, the, 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 the leave out from, from Google, from Oracle. And uh, we, instantly got some nice open source, well-tested and enterprise-grade connector layer with the external world. And especially with uh, the, the, the already provided bundle. You have, these bundles are just ready to use. You can pick up and uh, have a communication with the DAP and the directory and so on. But the layer also gives some great layer of extensibility if you need to write a connector for uh, an Excel spreadsheet, you can do it. We just uh, did it uh, last week for a company. Uh, this slide, uh, this image, tries to summarize the, possi the, the, the possibilities of communicating with the identity stores, with the external world, that Syncop has currently uh, ready to use by only using the, uh, in the, the, the really available connectors. And it has been tested by, uh, with any of the resources uh, represented here. So uh, Linux or even Unix systems, um, a wide variety of databases, Active Directory for sure, Google Apps, uh, and uh, also uh, different um, many different directory service implementation like Raquette, Apache DS, OpenLDAP, or OpenDJ. Um, by by sake of flexibility, we try to keep it compatible with major uh, JE containers. And uh, currently, you can find instructions on the wiki uh, to make it running without pain in uh, Tomcat, which is, of course, the default choice, but also JBoss, uh, Glassfish, and even WebLogic. 
uh, regarding the internal storage, the, the, the slide before was referring to the external communication about the internal storage, we fully support all these databases, also with session replication. And uh, the community has been busy during this month also defining a roadmap for the future. Uh, we are, we are at the moment we are working on road provisioning. So far we have been identifying identity with person. But this is not completely true. In identity management, you can even uh, manage groups or roles on external resources. We are currently adding this support in Synco, on the trunk. Uh, we'd like, we are also working on changing our RESTful layer that's currently um, based on Spring MVC. Uh, we are at Apache, so we're trying to empower Apache technologies as much as possible. We are moving to CXF, which will give us also uh, some additional level of flexibility and uh, to implement a soft layer uh, next to the RESTful, uh, but also the scheme interface. We are planning also to include some access management features via Shiro and uh, also to improve the external the communication with the external resources uh, by with concurrent asynchronous communication and also to have support for the OpenICF connectors. OpenICF is another fork of the original Sun Identity Connector framework which is almost compatible and it's nice because it has uh, some additional ready-to-use bundles, like for example a sub-bundle, which would be very useful in enterprise environments. Uh, just reported some success stories, the ones I'm aware of, of course, uh, because most of them have been done by my own company. Uh, there's a welcome, um, um, a private cloud uh, platform, uh, the, the, the network of public libraries in, in Holland, the network of uni uh, Dutch universities, the one of the biggest hospitals in, uh, in Italy, and then a legal consortium international. Uh, if you want to take a look at SQL, <laughs> in uh, several ways, uh, there's an online demo provided, uh, running on OpenShift, provided by my company. And it's there, publicly accessible. Uh, a bit actually currently is almost <laughs> easy maintenance because I'm deploying the, the new version. Uh, just before, I was deploying the new version just before the speech. Uh, you can download a virtual machine image with uh, anything, a Linux image with everything set up with a Linux uh, with a Synco running inside Tomcat. Uh, MySQL connected as an external resource, OpenLDAP connected as external resource, uh, and, and more. With every, everything with their web management interface, you can just load the image, uh, start it, and enjoy a, a quite uh, with, uh, an environment with some variety. Then uh, we also provide some uh, quick start projects on GitHub. If you want to run it on, uh, on JBoss, on Glassfish, or if you want to run it with SQL Server, any, almost any combination is supported here. You can just pick up the quick start and adapt to your game. Or instead, if you are a money lover, uh, the, the, the main way to, gen to create new projects is used by using an archetype. Uh, we are working in these days also to provide a simple standalone distribution, a big zip, you can just uncompress and start. And have, and, mm, have uh, a game an environment in which you can appreciate how the, the provisioning engine is working. Uh, the, the tool is done. If you have any questions, please go back. Um, how does it relate to OpenSSO? Because you haven't mentioned that for a while. OpenSSO is the, the, the name that Sun uh, gave to their access, access manager uh, when they released it as open, open source. As it happened to Identity Connector Frameworks, the project was basically dropped by Oracle and was took over by for Jock and the region company that rebranded it as OpenAM. So, uh, um, from, from uh, the, 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 the division I made at the beginning, uh, OpenAM is an access management product, while Single is a provisioning engine. We've been deploying uh, OpenAM in several contexts 
mostly because in my, com my company we are all former Sun consultants, so we, we know very well Sun technologies. And we also, uh, it's, it's, it has been easy to make them communicate. So, for example, in the hospital of Ancona, uh, the, in the, the access to every web application is managed by OpenAM, provisioned by Simple. About OpenID and WebID, it's more in the access side. So for the moment, uh, we don't have access management feature. Uh, but as soon as we will be able to integrate uh, Apache Shiro, for example, we uh, it's on the roadmap that we will also try to uh, include some federation capability, SIML or OpenID, or even OpenID. But not for the moment. So for the moment, there is no access management. We will do it once. Uh, Will include Shira. Um, you expose the, the way you are storing data, uh, the fact that you are storing data into an SQL database. Would it make sense to store those data into an LDAP server as soon as you are already connected to one? Um, I just repeat question for report. Um, Emmanuel, Alessandro, is asking uh, why we choose. Uh, a relational internal storage instead of a directory like one. Right. This is uh, this, this approach is uh, the traditional approach that most IDM uh, systems uh, do. Uh, we uh, switched to uh, this uh, model because it is true that in a directory uh, like uh, stores you can access your information very fast. But it's also true that writing information is not so good. And also, we, we manage uh, more or less 30 different entities where users are just one of those entities because there's also configuration, connectors, resources, mapping, and so on. So uh, at first we thought to uh, have a mixed approach. Everything but users in the relational store users in the external store. But then we ended up with this hard to manage and we moved everything internal but uh, keeping the possibility to extend the schema because one of the greatest features of directories uh, directory like uh, stores is the, the ability to add new attributes at runtime with schemas. So we kept this from the uh, directory world but we stayed on the relation in the, in the relational to give us much flexibility when needing to make relationships between entities because it is another point this make a relationship with entities where directories are not so good any other question so i see your presentation is uh, so identity management for managing identities in organizations uh, could be used uh, in the opposite context. So the personal, so the individuals, individual users to manage their uh, identities for different applications. As a sort Just of to teaching. say the, the social networks. I have okay. three As or four of them. And, uh, no, I mean, well, uh, how much sense does it make? Yeah, except password manager from Mozilla, from Mozilla, it's uh, it's uh, something else. So you, you can later on think of scenarios, but but now if if you can manage all your uh, accounts from social networks and other accounts, I don't know. Uh, it could be anyway. It's feasible to have uh, Syncop to manage uh, to 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 use it as a personal wallet for. Uh, your accounts, your social accounts, for example. I don't know how much it would be practical for this because it is quite far from a typical usage. Everything in the system has been uh, designed to deal with a great number of users, of attributes, and a small number of, um, I would say, of a, small, uh, a low number of co different connections to the external system. So uh, for user, 
with users, you have just the opposite. So you, you, you can do it, but you, have, you, you will have to write a, a, a Twitter connector, for example, that I don't know how much usable could be in the main scenario, the, the, the enterprise one. So uh, I, I don't know. It could, uh, probably it's, it's technically feasible, but I, I, I'm not seeing this very likely to be used this way. Even because uh, you, for running a sync of you need anyway a relational database and a J container. So for a single user, maybe it's not the most practical uh, solution. It makes sense in, in the case that you want to uh, build applications using your account from different uh, application for using your account. Yeah, but in this case, it could be more um, more access management job yeah. than than pure provisioning. So it's quite borderline the, the scenario you are suggesting. Questions? Okay, so we're done. If you need any information later on, we, I, I will be here for the rest of the conference, or there are uh, the, 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 the project website, incubator.apache.org slash that is going to change soon, we hope, in sync.apache.org.